And uh, our guest in this uh, first segment of the 9 o'clock hour, Governor Jim Justice. Governor Justice, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Hey, guys. How's everybody doing? We're doing well. Thank you so much. We appreciate you taking some time to be with us this morning. And yesterday you made the announcement on your birthday that you will run for U.S. Senate. Why have you decided to make that decision, Governor? Well, guys, it's, uh, it's really simple to me. I mean, you know me well enough to know that uh, I've never wanted anything. And, it, and that's just plain all there is to it. I drive myself. You know, I've, I, I donate my salary in full. I absolutely feed myself and everything else that goes with it. I don't want anything. I am not a politician that's looking for something for self. But now just look at our nation. And let's be really fair. Look at what's going on with the Biden administration. And look at how handcuffed we are in this nation from the standpoint that we don't have control in the Senate. You know, if, if anybody in the right mind that has a reasonable, logical mind thinks that we're right at the border, we're right as far as energy independence, we're right in Afghanistan, we're right on inflation, we're right on this woke education stuff, we're right on defund the police. If anybody in the world thinks that that's the right way America should be trending, they're out of their mind. And so, so there's just one thing. And, and, and like it or not like it, my dad would always say, son, if you know it and the good Lord knows it, that's all that matters. And in my world, I am a patriot through and through. And that is the only reason that I want to do this because we got real problems. I can beat Manchin. Nobody else can beat him. You know, if he decides to run, I think there's a good chance he will decide to run. He's got to be beaten, and nobody can beat him but me, and I absolutely believe that with all my soul. Every single poll in the world says exactly that. Somebody's got to step up and do something. We're going to go around the room, each of you a question, and you can get a follow-up in, too, and I'll start with Delegate Michael Height. Good morning, Governor. How are you? I'm good, sir. How are you doing, Mike? I'm doing well. So uh, my question uh, deals with um, you have a year and a half left as governor. And as a delegate, that's that's where my concern is right now. Um, and we have some crises still in West Virginia. And one in particular is with corrections. And I'd like to know what your plan is over the next year, year and a half to take care of the this particular crisis in West Virginia. Well, Mike, let's, again, you know me well enough to know I, I'm, I'm not going to blow smoke at anybody. I've sent bills up two different times. This is almost like, and I don't want to make light of it, but, you know, the man sitting below the dam in his house and the park ranger sent, said, you got to get out of here. His blood's going to wash your home away. Then right, right behind that, he's up on the roof, and they send a boat up there, and he's got to leave. You know, you're going to be flooded away. Then right behind that, he's sitting up on the roof, and they, they try to get him with a helicopter, and he keeps saying all the time, no, I'm not going anywhere. The good Lord's going to take care of me. Well, then all of a sudden, he's going through the pearly gates, and, and God's there, and, and he says, God, you know, why did you let this happen to me? I kept saying, you know, that you'd take care of me. And he said, I tried three times. I sent the park ranger, I sent the boat, and I sent the helicopter. you got to do something, you know, that absolutely for yourself. Well, I've tried two times. It's crazy for us to not do locality pay or whatever it may be to get our correctional officers the numbers to where they need to be to be able to take care of our our institutions. I mean, it is crazy for us to not do this. And, uh, and the very second that I get the nod from the Senate president and the Speaker of the House that this is going to pass, I will call a special session that very next minute to correct this problem. But, uh, but it's a problem. But every time you send something up, what happens is, and I, and I hate to say this, but you've got counties that are very rural counties that absolutely just want to push back and say, well, if we're going to do that, why not for us? And you can't get the first base. And you know what that's about, Mike. And so, so uh, I mean, the, the absolute cost of living in your neck of the woods is so much greater 
than in other places in West Virginia, and we got to do something about it. Let's just apply some reason and logic. That's all we need to do. Follow up, Mike? No, I would agree with everything you say, and, and I'm, I'm uh, confident that there are talks going on behind the scenes, and I'm, I'm hoping we get to that point where you can call a, a special session soon because we have to do something about this, and we have to do it now. Let me just say, Delegate Mike, you're in a very agreeable mood today. You're going to lose your cranky <laughs> reputation if you keep agreeing with everybody. <laughs> Not totally. My apologies. <laughs> Former Tax Commissioner of the Great State of West Virginia, Michael Carl. Governor uh, of the uh, pu- pu- major public policy accomplishments that have been achieved that, that, that you initiated and then the legislature approved of, which is the one that you're most proud of? Well, you know, I there's there's been, and I don't mean this egotistically and not at all, but there's been lots of stuff, guys. I mean, you know, when you when you walk in there on day one and the state's flat bankrupt and you see where we are today, you know, whether it be the Roads to Prosperity program or whether it be, you know, changing, you know, our whole footprint as far as tourism or diversification of our state, you know, uh, we want to always remember our natural resources, you know, whether it be coal or oil or gas. But we got water, timber. We got lots and lots and lots of stuff, and we we needed diversified economy and for higher ed or manufacturing or whatever it may be, and uh, you know, especially tourism. And so, so, but uh, surely a a you know absolutely crowning moment in a lot of ways was the uh, largest tax cut in the state history, and and so we've got. You know, I mean, just ima- imagine this. I mean, we we worked really hard to build a rainy day fund to a billion dollars. Well, we're almost going to give a billion dollars back to the people every single year. We're going to give a rainy day fund almost away every single year back to our back to the hardworking West Virginians all across the state. You know, in addition to that. We absolutely are almost going to be able to bank a rainy day fund every year, and equivalent to almost what we've got in addition, in addition to giving a rainy day fund to the people. It is unbelievable what we're, where we've gotten and, and just how, how much that will do to spur more and more and more folks moving and coming to West Virginia. For God's sakes of living, guys, you know, you guys got it going on. And we ought to run your playbook over and over and over across West Virginia. But we got a lot of places in this state. We got to have people. We got to have some people here. And the population and what will drive the people here just absolutely offer lower and lower and lower taxes, and you'll drive more and more people here. I I, I agree with the, your discussion of the policy achievements and, and, uh, uh, I, particularly appreciate your respect for progress that's being made here in eastern panhandle thank you yes sir admiral bill stubblefield good morning governor uh let's look ahead at the upcoming campaign if uh, if we can uh you have accused congressman mooney as being a carpetbagger he in turn has accused you of being a rhino uh this uh, opening salvo suggests to me that the race is going to be more personality driven than issues driven which unfortunately we should have it the other way around is this a harbinger of what we can expect to find in the in the several next several months well i hope not i hope not you know uh we want to be respectful you know, Alex Mooney is our congressman, and we want to be respectful to that and everything. And uh, but but the the net of the whole thing is, you know, I, I, you know, listen, I I I'm not one to start stuff, but I'm 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 not going to sit idly by and listen to people's just garbage. You know, the Rhino thing came out of nowhere. There could not have been under any circumstance a more conservative governor of this of this state in everything that i've done all the judging of my deeds honest and, and true standing absolutely rock solid for life absolutely you know shepherding you know the passage of 
you know, an abortion bill that absolutely is probably one of the toughest in the entire in the, in the entire nation. Absolutely standing rock solid behind Amendment Two. I mean, I'm a hunter. I have, I'm I'm an outdoorsman and been that way all my life. And I would tell you a thousand times over, there has never been a gun on its own in this world that has ever killed somebody. Absolutely. It's people killing people, not the guns killing people. And, and, and right behind all that, just look at what I've done from the standpoint of minding the store, the economics. You know, I was your father or your dad in COVID. And absolutely, we didn't shut down everything end to end. We absolutely kept our state running to the best that we possibly could with the knowledge that we had. I mean, for crying out loud, you know, nobody had a playbook. You know, I followed President Trump through and through. Absolutely, I hope to God above in every way that he is reelected as our president. We don't have a president today, guys. We had a real president three years ago, and this country could be in peril beyond belief. You know, I, you know. I hope you know that that with all in me, that that uh, things will be civil. But the real truth of the ma- matter is, in regard to Congressman Mooney, to the best of my knowledge, now, there could have been another time somewhere. But I've been the governor for six and a half years. I've seen Alex Mooney in Charleston and met with him one time. And he came really to my briefing. We didn't even get to sit and talk about things or what to do. You know, and, you know, I I think that, that and I'm not going to get preoccupied with anything. You know, from the standpoint I want people to always just look at Jim Justice one way and one way alone. Just judge me by my deeds. I mean, for crying out loud, I don't just talk about all these things. That I'd like to do this. I'd like to do this. I'd like to do this. My dad would say it just perfect. I've done done. You know, and so, so you know, we can talk all day long. I, I think really at the end of the day, uh, Alex Mooney needs to, needs to be concerned just about about his popularity and and where he is, and on and on and on. You have a follow up, Bill? Yeah, uh, you mentioned President Trump a couple so times. Uh, do you anticipate President Trump getting involved in the race? I know that Congressman Mooney has said he would very much like for President Trump to get involved. I think you have said the same thing. Do you anticipate that he will get involved in the race? Well, I don't really know. You know, I mean, I. Like I said, I'm, I'm I'm really close with the Trump family. I've been that way forever and everything. You know, that'll be his decision, you know, whether or not he wants to get involved. Uh, you know, uh, I, I, I honestly don't know. I, you know, I, I, I think, uh, I think President Trump, you know, the, you know, the, the odds are overwhelming that the President Trump will get involved and endorse me. But at the same time, you know, uh, uh, you know, I'll be very respectful if he decides not to get involved. Another quick one before Rob cuts me off. That wasn't the rule, Bill. Uh, yeah, no, I know the rule. I'm breaking the rules now. Uh, but you, uh, uh, Senator Capito, joined you yesterday uh, for your announcement. That is highly unusual for a sit-in senator to endorse someone in the primary. Uh, what messages does that send? Well, I, you know, I think the whole wide world, you know, of Senator Capito, and you know, I, I go. I go way back in time, you know, where my dad was uh, was close with Governor Moore, really, really close. In fact, one of his campaign chairs, you know, and uh, I think in, a, in you know a, a small county area, but uh, but but really good friends, you know. They uh, they sat with us, each other at WVU football games a lot of times, and uh, and traveled different places together. They, you know, so really good friends and. And Shelly's daughter, you know, played volleyball with uh, with our daughter, and uh, or, you know, uh, uh, you know, in competition. But uh, but you know, we've known we've known the family a long time. I think uh, I think Shelly is uh, you know uh, an incredible senator, an incredible representative of, of the state of West Virginia. And so, with all that being said, I was really honored to 
you know, her choice to, to come and join my camp and, and say, you know, I'm going to stand rock solid with Jim Justice and we're going to win this thing. Because, guys, here's the thing you've got to be, you know, the most concerned about. This isn't all about Jim Justice or Alex Mooney or whatever. This is about taking control of the Senate. If you think for one second, now there's a chance Joe Manchin may not run, but I will promise you to God above that if Jim Justice weren't in this race or Jim Justice decided not to run, Joe Manchin will run for sure. And he will beat Alex Mooney going away. Now, absolutely, if we want to take control of the Senate, and that's what this is all about. That's why you see Lindsey Graham there. He didn't have to come. That's why you see Shelley there. Absolutely, we need control of the Senate. That's all there is to it. You know, what's going on in Washington is absolutely a disgrace. Larry Schultz, attorney at law. Uh, good morning, Governor. Uh, I have a question uh, which may reveal some ignorance on my part about the flow of votes in northern and southern West Virginia, but it strikes me that uh, this could be shaping up this primary between yourself and Mr. Mooney as a north-south fight uh, where you hold a, a, an advantage in Kanawha and the other uh, big counties in the south, and he may, if he has an advantage anywhere, have one up here. Do you see it that way? I don't. And I don't want it to be that way at all. I mean, you know, really and truly, from the standpoint of people in the South, you are correct about this. Nobody knows Alex Mooney in the South. And, uh, and, but from the, standpoint, from the standpoint, you know, of the North and the Eastern Panhandle, you know, I, I hope to goodness that, uh, you know, I've had – I've had in- incredible warm feelings about the folks in the eastern panhandle and the northern panhandle of the state. And, uh, and, and you know, I, I've got a great relationship with many, many, many folks there. And I, and I, and I, really, I really would expect to be a very, very, very strong candidate in the eastern panhandle and the northern panhandle. And I, I do not, I do not expect this to be a north-south game at all. Follow up, Larry. Um, uh, not exactly on the same point, but do you see? Um, I think I took from what you said a few minutes earlier that it's perhaps slightly more likely that Joe Manchin will decide to seek his fame and fortune elsewhere than in this race if uh, you appear to have a commanding lead in the primary. Absolutely, I, I think that. Uh... I don't. I don't mean this in a, in a bad way at all. Because Joe Manchin would be formidable no matter no matter who the candidate would be. But Joe knows he can't beat me, and 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 and, and really and truly, you know, from the standpoint of of our state, I think if if I'm and 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 I'm you know it's it's really awkward for me to to talk in this way because. This is not my personality, guys. I mean, I don't want to be egotistical sounding in any way, but uh, but just factually, every single person, you know, from this, all the senators, you know, all kinds of different senators say, if you're in it, Joe won't run. That's all there is to it. From the standpoint of what we all know, all of us know this, that without any question, because Joe's not a fan of Alex Mooney. If absolutely I, I'm not in this, Joe run, and we end up in the same situation that we're in right here today. Because Alex Mooney has not got one chance on the planet of beating Joe Manchin. In fact, and with, without any question, Patrick Morrissey would have had a lot better chance to be able to beat, you know, Joe Manchin in a, you know, in a senatorial race. And even all the polling and everything that was done from all the Senate, Senate side, way, way, way beyond me, said Morrissey can't beat Manchin either. Absolutely. That's why I'm standing in front of you as a candidate now. 
you know, because we need control. And in the way it looks, with all the numbers, with everything in the world that can be put together, Manchin would run if I'm not in it, and Manchin would win. And so it just boils right down to that. And I, that sounds egotistical, but, uh, but that's just the way it is. David Valente, former State Libertarian Party chair. Yeah, Governor, I'm actually probably one of the votes that you are looking at in that I'm a nonpartisan, uh, no party affiliation uh, voter now. Um, uh, one of the things that I've grown concerned with is that Republicans, when it comes to campaigning, to uh, tout their small government conservatism. Um, yet in West Virginia and, and around the country, the Republican Party has really been growing government, whether it's, you know, the, in size and scope, whether it's in medical freedom or school curriculum or even in business. Uh, what do you hope to bring to Washington? Do you br- hope to bring the old fashioned GOP small government conservatism or is the era of Republican big government begun? Well, Guys, again, you know me. You know me like the back of your hand. Uh, you know, I mean, there's there's a lot, a lot, a lot of success stories around me, and and from the standpoint of of you know, Jim is a guy that a lot of people would say is as common as an old shoe. Well, it's not real flattering, but it's just me. And at the end of the day, I've got a lot, a lot, a lot of business experience. I've done lots of stuff, and and absolutely from the standpoint of what we need in Washington, we need a ton more just common sense and reason and logic. We don't need to be growing government and just growing government, and uh, and and we need we you know you saw where I stood. I stood rock solid for local control. I you know I don't think that we need you know Charleston running all of our lives. In fact, in so many different ways from the Eastern Panhandle standpoint, Charleston is so far away that in many ways they don't have a clue really what is the very best and what works the greatest for the Eastern Panhandle, and we should be learning from the Eastern Panhandle. But but from my standpoint, I think what I'll, you know, I'll bring to the table is I'll bring to the table of patriotism. I'll bring to the table that I don't want anything. You're not going to talk about some politician that's got their hand out and wanting something for them first and foremost. I don't want anything, guys. You know, I go back to our founding fathers over and over. They stepped up and served. A lot of them lost their farms. A lot of them lost their businesses. To create this nation, they served. And that's what we don't have now. We don't have many politicians that are doing that. We've got a lot of politicians that they've never had a job. All they do is feed on us. Well, you know, I mean, every single thing I tell you is to the very best of my, my ability, the truth. And, and so, so it's just as simple as just that. I'm the guy that's going to bring the common sense. I'm the I'm guy that's going to bring the, the logic and the reason. I'm going to be the guy that doesn't want anything. You know, I'm going to be the guy in the room that's got a ton, ton, ton of experience. And uh, and hopefully that will resonate and, and carry the day. David, follow up? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it sounds like you're saying what I, I think you're saying. So you're saying that, that you are going to be more of a small government guy going into Washington. Absolutely. Hands down. I mean, it is... It, To me, it is absolutely just, I mean, it's just silly how we bloat and bloat and bloat government. You know, it's, uh, you know, not only is it silly, it's terribly costly and it just uh, drags our nation down in every way. Governor, final word is yours, and I'll give you that on the backdrop of a quote that's so everywhere this morning, which is Senator Manchin saying, but make no mistake, I will win any race I enter. Governor, final word is yours. Well, I, I, I don't really need to be debating, you know, uh, you know Joe's fantasy land. Uh, you know, uh, 
you know, I, I could sit and tell you that uh, the only offices that I've ever run for in my life are the Board of Education in Raleigh County and the governor and the governor, you know, and uh, and everything that I've been in, not only have I won, I've won going away by my margins that were really substantial, you know, but, but, but. I know that uh, the very, very second, and I would tell Joe this, the very, very second that you start, you know, boasting about the fact that you're going to win no matter what, that's, you know, that's like being on a street corner from times past and everything thinking you're the baddest and you're the toughest and everything. That's about when you're about to get your, you know, what handed to you. And uh, and so, so I, you know, I, I you know, like I said, uh, you know, Joe has, uh, I think he's made some major, major missteps with Build Back America and all the different stuff that he's done and, and, uh, and got hoodwinked, you know, into the, the, you know, the gas pipelines and all the different things. And we, and a lot, a lot, a lot of folks in West Virginia got left holding the bag when, when who really knows what happened, you know, from the standpoint of how it either, you know, benefited, or maybe it was a big disappointment, you know, to, to Senator Manchin. But but I, I just think that, uh, you know, we'll see how this thing plays out as we go forward. I, I keep going right back to the same thing I've said 15 times, and that is just judge me for what I've done. I mean, for crying out loud, you know, I, I speak the truth. I know I, I speak folksy and everything, but uh, but I love West Virginians and and uh, I don't want anything. I never have. And and I just I just hope and pray that we can keep this rocket ship ride going that we've got going. And and I'm going to run through the finish line. I, I got to take. Can I take? Can I take one second to tell you a great story? Certainly. You know. Okay. Let me tell you this. I. You know, I've coached basketball forever, and I love being with the kids. And I don't go on vacations. I don't do anything. I mean, for crying out loud, you know. I think me being with those kids is really important and everything, and I'm surely not going to take a second away from my job. But now listen to this. You know, our team lost, you know, in the uh, sectional first game. Well, we've not ever done that before, and it wasn't any fun. And so, but I'm a real believer, and and this story is really great to me. But, uh, you know, I'm a real believer that God always shows up and he maybe not maybe not on our timetables, but he always shows up. So the next day, I'm I'm off to Charleston and everything, and I'm surely thinking about the ball game a lot, and not very happy about the ball game and everything. And I get to my office, and I'm going through there, and one of the ladies in my office says, "You may want to look at this letter." Well, I get letters all the time and everything, and I read as many of them as I can and everything. And she handed it to me. And I looked, and on the, on the envelope of the letter, it said Matt Fitzwater. Well, Matt Fitzwater played basketball for me 30 years ago, you know, and I coached him in, well, I don't know, 100 or 200 games. But And then Matt went on and played at Woodrow Wilson later on in his career and everything and uh, and, and was the state champion back-to-back, you know, but, but nevertheless, Here's a letter from a guy that I hadn't heard from for 25 years. And remember, I said, God always shows up. And I'm thinking about, you know, our game last night, wasn't very happy about it and all that kind of stuff. And then all of a sudden I read in the first line, this letter says, you know, Coach, I was on a run the other day with my two kids. Matt Fitzwater is 42 years old now. And he said, and, and, my sons looked at me and said, Dad, can we just walk? We're tired. And I looked at them and said, just keep sawing the wood, boys. And so we kept on running. We finished the run. And they said to me, Dad, what did you mean by that? What did that mean? And he said, it means to persevere and continue to make steady progress and you'll achieve. And then he said, I remember the first time in my life I heard you say that to us. We were at the National AAU Tournament in the Sweet 16 game, and you came into us. We we played poorly in the first half, and we were substantially behind. It was the only time I can ever remember you being disappointed in our effort. And you told us to keep sawing the wood, boys. He said, well, you know the outcome of the game. We ended up coming back and winning the game and advancing to the quarterfinals of the National Tournament. 
and he said, you know, even though we won many, many, many games, he said, you're, the life lessons that you gave us and the words of wisdom were way more important than winning those games. And then he said, he said, when I was in Army Ranger School, I'm telling you, if that doesn't take your breath, and he said, and on every military deployment, I would say to myself, every day, keep sawing the wood. And he said, and I would now say to you, I would now say to you, as the governor of this great state, you know, you have another year and a half left, I would say to you, governor, keep sawing the wood because people need you. And then he said, if you want to get in touch, I live in Germany now. This guy went to West Point, and absolutely his family didn't have much of nothing. A good middle-class family, a great, great family, but absolutely an American hero. And there the letter was. God always shows up, guys. And absolutely we should be so blessed by just that. But that, to me, is the story of the day. Thank you for letting me say it and everything or tell, talk you through it and everything and uh, taking the time. But thank you all for all you do every day. Governor, thank you for your time this morning. We very much appreciate it. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Have thank a great you, day. Governor. Governor Jim Justice.